How many guys does it feel like it's, are in the mix so far this year? Well, right now, and you guys kind of know me, I want to get to eight or nine guys, and that's where we're trending towards. We are not there right now. In fact, if I'm sure somebody may ask me, so I'll kind of give you the, the, the answers to the test here a little bit. I couldn't name what our starting five is going to be right now. I love the fact that we have a lot of competition up front, but we are not ready to name a starting five. And I would say we have eight, and we're working on that ninth to be in the mix. I still would anticipate that we will get to a rotation within the guys up front. You know, whether that's seven, whether that's eight, I tell those guys it's up to them. If they deserve to play, their teammates trust them, then they're going to be in there playing. How is Operation Left Tackle going? <laughs> That's a great question. Been very pleased with Katori Leviston right now. And Andrew Line Gang is continuing to develop on it. Um, and to me, the great thing, and, and if you guys would see, we still have, you know, Cooper Beebe, who's uh, proven to be pretty good at that position as well. So when you look at that rotation, it's a, really it's a three-horse race because um, you can look at Katori being there, Andrew Langang being there, or Cooper Beebe. Now, obviously, Cooper Beebe is going to start, so then that brings into the mix you know, Andrew Langang. That brings into the mix Hadley Panzer. That in, brings into the mix uh, with uh, Carver Willis as well and Dawson Delforge and uh, Taylor Poitier. Was the fact that at the next level, Cooper's probably an interior lineman. Does that come into your thinking at all? That no, you get rid of it doesn't. And what we're going to do is what's best for the football team now and what his future may hold for him, which, you know, I'm excited, but I'm excited about this year. And uh, um, that's, that's for them to decide uh, when he leaves this place. The difference, but do you have to teach anything differently going from you know to a new offensive coordinator or a new system a little bit? You know, there's a there's a lot of similarities within our offense. Um, there's obviously going to be some nuanced changes. Uh, there's kind of a a melting pot, if you will, of some of the things that we had done previously, and then some of the things that Coach Klein is continuing to build on. And as long as we're efficient, we're being physical. That's what we're going to care about. And, uh, and then obviously explosive. And, uh, and I think that was something we were very good with a year ago, is being explosive. But, uh, you know, here it is, if you guys were waiting, the, the one, my favorite word, consistency. And consistency not only up front from an offensive line standpoint, but consistency from an offensive standpoint as well. What other kind of younger guys that kind of popped out? Well, I'll tell you, um, you know, when you look at Andrew Leingang, when you look at, uh, you know, Hadley Panzer, who are obviously still only in their second year and we're in the conversation that these guys are going to be potentially in that starting mix, I still constitute them as younger guys. Now, you look at some of the young fellows that we've come in with, um, you know, there's two names that really pop, and I'm pleased with all five new guys. But Drake Beckwith is, uh, he's going to be a great football player. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the strongest guys on the offensive line um, is Michael Capria out of Kansas City. And I couldn't be more pleased with him for a guy who's never played center. And we recruited him as a center. And to see where he's at right now, I couldn't be more pleased. John Pastore, you know, he looks a little bit different. The guy's got like a 29-inch vertical leap, very similar to me. Um, and, and then you look at Jalen Clemp. And, you know, certainly we can't, uh, can't forget, I really like how Alex Key is continuing to develop as well from a physicality standpoint. So if I were going to say two names that pop, um, you're going to look at, uh, you're going to look at uh, Beckwith and you're going to look at Capria right now. And, and they've gotten reps with the twos. You talk a little bit about KT. Could you kind of share just how he's progressed since he's been here at K-State? We joke about it. And we joke about it from a maturity standpoint. And Katori jokes about it with the other young guys as far as some of the interesting things that we talk about. 
whether or not he's the starting left tackle, whether or not he's this or that, I cannot be more pleased and more happy for Katori with the development that he's had and growth he's had as a young man. Here's a guy who's graduated from college, you know, graduated from college and comes from a tougher situation. He's taking grad school right now. He's got a great attitude. And I would be remiss if I would not say that the impact of Coach Carroll and his entire staff have had on that young man. It is, I get chills thinking about that guy. And where he was and where he's at now, I couldn't be more pleased. And I'm excited for him because he's playing his ass off right now. One more. Ben Taylor Poitier has bounced back from injury. Uh, Taylor Poitier is probably one of the more talented guys that we have in our room. He has not played really in a year and a half. You know, he had a surgery uh, in the spring of 2021. Obviously, uh, heartbroken for that young man um, in the fall of this past year. And he even missed the, the lion's share of this past spring. So he's knocking some rust off. I think his expectations for himself, he needs to temper. And he and I have had that conversation. But uh, uh, I couldn't be more excited for Taylor Poitier. And I think that you guys are going to enjoy watching that young man um, play the game of football because he is explosive and he is damn, damn good.